Hey guys, John Faulkner here with Survival Dispatch. And in today's Survival Dispatch Classic, we're gonna look at my man, Alan Kay's minimalist get home bag. Let's check it out. Alan Kay here with Survival Dispatch. I wanna to talk to you today about a bag that I've had for many years. I've carried it around the world, literally, and everywhere I go, it's the one bag I take. When I fly, it's my carry-on bag. Uh, obviously, I take some of the sharp things out before I use it as a carry-on. But uh, I've carried this bag everywhere. I really love it. It's the Maxpedition Monsoon Gear Slinger. Uh, really, really rugged, well-built, as all of the Maxpedition stuff is. I'll give, let you see what the rear view looks like. Not a huge bag, uh, and that's one of, the, one of the things with bug out bags, they tend to get a little too big. So this bag is set up for southeastern U.S. where I live, and it's set up for this time of year, which is summertime. So everything that's in there uh, is geared toward that. And when I travel, if I'm going to a desert, obviously it looks different, and in the wintertime, it looks even more different. I add a few layers of clothing, balaclavas, stuff like that. One feature I love about it is you can turn it around if you get onto a cab or a subway and sit down and you don't have to take your bag off and you can access items in it without removing the bag from your body. Uh, another feature that I really like is the buckle here has a quick release so that if you need to scuttle the bag, like if it's time to fight or move, you can get that thing off of you really quick. So that's a nice feature. So we'll get on into the bag here. Uh, one of our first and most pressing needs is usually water. And here I've got just a basic clean canteen. It's full of water. I think I paid $20 for that. The cap dummy corded on because I don't want to lose it. Inside of here, I have a stainless steel cup purchased at Walmart for five bucks. Gives me the ability to do a little bit of cooking in there if I need to. On the outside, I keep a rain jacket so that I can access it quickly. This one is, is really, really lightweight, made by TrueSpec. And it's, it's a black color, you know, something that if I'm in an urban area, it doesn't stand out, it's not overly tactical. Nor is the bag, aside from the Molly, uh, this is, wouldn't be out of place in an airport or a college campus or anything like that. You know, it, it doesn't stand out. So this section, opens and you can attach different items there and then secure it. Right on the outside for quick access, I keep a tourniquet there because when I need a tourniquet, I'm probably gonna need it really, really quick. On the side compartment here, I keep maps and compasses so that uh, that's a wrist compass. And then here's a compass with some paste beads on a lanyard. I like to have two compass with me so I can cross check them and make sure that that they do agree. And also if I lose or damage one, I have, I have a backup. I won't bore you with the maps, but they're pretty much all weatherproof maps of my area of the Southeastern US, both road and topographic that would, that would aid me in getting to and from different places. I've attached a small dump pouch here. You know, if I happen to cross an area where there's things that I wanna collect really quick and forage for them, could be food, could be materials, could be dry tender for a fire. I can just stuff it in there and move along without having to remove the bag from my body. In this back section, there's a zippered compartment here where I keep things I might want to access. I have a signal whistle. I have a folding saw. This is a Baco Laplander. Uh, saws are really, really important to me because if you're fatigued, you know, swinging a knife or a machete around, you might become injured. Plus it's really loud, you know, that chop chop can be heard for a long distance. So saws are, are more stealthy and a lot less likely to injure me. I also have a really lightweight, minimalist, fast drying boonie hat in a flat OD color. Uh, it's made by Five Star Gear. It has on the inside a zippered compartment where you could keep things or the way it's designed is the hat will fold up into that, into that zippered container. Crunches up really, really small. You can fit it in your fist. Lightweight, doesn't take up much space. Uh, this is a knife. It's a cold steel Master Hunter 
in San Mai 3 steel. Uh, good knife. This is a, a sheath that I custom made. I really like this just as a general use knife, so I keep that in there. And a signal panel for daytime use. And that's it for that pocket. In the, the center compartment, I have a Shimog made by Five Star Gear. Unlike the, the typical cotton ones that we see, this one is, is fast drying, so in cold weather, you know, you can use it actually to wrap up and stay warm in, whereas cotton stays wet for a, a really long amount of time and it's hard to dry out. And this is a good enough length that I can use it for a lot of things, slings and medical applications and so forth. So I like it. And, and the weight is super light. I also have just your standard military poncho that I would typically use to cross a body of water or use it for, uh, for shelter purposes. Really versatile piece of kit. And you see the size of this bag, all of this is coming out of this bag. I mean, it's kind of like the, like the clown car or the magician's hat where they just keep coming out. Uh, for insulation this time of year, just a, a whoobie that has a zipper on it that I can get inside that thing and, uh, and stay warm. I tend to sleep hot and this being summer, you know, I really don't feel like I need more than that. And if I did need more, I could always supplement with natural insulation grasses in urban situations newspapers or i could go the whole hog and build a shelter if if that's needed uh, this is the snug pack stasha it's a another shelter option or used in conjunction with the wooby i can use this as a windproof waterproof layer it has some cord in there with it where you can truss it up as a shelter it's uh it has buttons around the edges. The dimensions of it are, I'm six foot six, and this thing is probably around seven or better in length. So when you button it together, as I have it configured now, that's basically a bivy bag that I can crawl in and have a windproof, waterproof barrier for my body. And uh, so many other uses for that. Really, really lightweight, doesn't take up much room, so I, I like to, carry this along if I make a poncho for the shelter for a roof then I will encapsulate the wooby inside of this and then of course the clothing that I wear that's yet another layer that I can stay warm with inside uh, one of the inner compartments I keep enough 550 cord that I can use it for trapping and for shelter construction in the top section here I like these collapsible water bags that I can carry water with me from one location to another. I can treat it on site or treat it when I get there. Water filter, the Sawyer Mini along with duct tape as always wrapped around it. Good multi-use item. This is just simply some cotton balls and Vaseline inside of a little diabetic test strip container so the lid is hinged on and I won't lose it. Enough for lots of fires there. The Pure Fire Tactical uh, that we did the other videos on that I now exclusively use these as a fire starter. So I have that from my fire capabilities. And that concludes the bag. So we have water, shelter, fire. And uh, this time of year, you know, you notice I don't have food in here. And I don't really feel like I need to because this area of the world is abundant with food. I can walk along and graze all day. So... This time of year, food, not so much for me. I don't feel like it's an issue. And bear in mind also that I always have my survival kit, my wallet kit. We've also done a video on that. So there's food procurement options in there as well. Uh, in the wintertime, obviously, I would add some more layers to this, maybe a balaclava, a pair of gloves, and I might put some rations in there. There's still room in the bag to do that. But I just wanted to present this bag to you as an option. You know, by choosing a bag this size, you limit yourself to what will fit in this bag. And it will decrease that tendency we have of, oh, there's more room in the bag. It'd be great to put this in. Hey, give me the boat anchor. And then you end up with something that you can't really carry. And so you can have a pretty good kit for around 17 to 20 pounds that, that will cover most of your needs. I think right now this kit is at around 15 pounds. I haven't weighed it in its current form. Uh, but just wanted to throw it out there, something to think about. Customize, take some of these ideas and make them your own. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions or comments, leave them below and we'll see you next time.